John Boyle. Aaron Levine showing off with his tie again. What's a tie? I haven't worn that in a while. Really? Art doesn't even care. He doesn't care at all. All right, how come you always get called just about last? Have you worked that out with Dave or something? What's up? All right. There we Fine, go. John Boyle. What's up, Michelle? Uh, sorry, I didn't want to step over the banter. Yeah, uh, really. Pete, this will be obviously the first mod game coming up, but uh, first chance to kind of let guys run and hit a little. What what do you need to see out of it? Well, th there's a lot of stuff going on for this this first game for us. Um, you know, it's, it's we're doing everything that we can do to make it as game like in terms of all of the, what it takes to get to the game. You know, and that's that's all of the uh, the work that goes on in the locker room, pregame stuff, the pregame routines. Uh, on the field stuff to get ready, back in the locker room, the time frames, all, we're doing that all those exactly like a game. Half times, 12 minutes, the whole thing, and, and uh, coaches in the booth, all that, we're doing all that, you know, and, and uh, so it's, as much as anything, this is really about procedural, you know, approach, and getting that thing knocked out. Um, when you have four games, you know, you have plenty of time to work that out, and so um, I want to make sure that w we have this nailed here at home for sure, and uh, and, and, and so that, that's really that's one of the big emphasis. Now, obviously, uh, what, what we're going to do is we're going to get a really good test on the first couple of weeks of work, you know, and see who knows what, and see if guys are commanding the, uh, you know, their stuff on offense and defense, and and, and uh, um, the tempo and the and the you know the, the exchanges that we make going in and out, substitutions, all that kind of stuff to make us really sharp game at game time when it comes up. Wednesday will be the next really big shot for us when we come back around and go to the stadium again. So this is kind of like the first preseason game for us and trying to get everything organized and, and get off to a good start. And, and normally you guys would not do necessarily the special teams, the kicks, and the punts in a mock game. But without the preseason games, how do you get that work in? Yeah, we're going to do all that. Yeah, we're, we're going to take care of that. So our first groups will be getting their work with subs and, and – uh, that's an important part of it. It's really, it's a lot of it is being comfortable with all of the changes that occur and and, and the, uh, the discipline and the routine of that. So um, that's all part of the expectations of getting knocked out this week. Greg Bell. Uh, isn't that great? Isn't that great? It is. Thank you. Uh, we saw yesterday your team coach announced no fans for the first three games. I think we all assumed that, but. Do you have any reason to believe that any time this season you may have fans or something normal in the stadium? Shoot, Greg, I don't know that. You know, I really, I have, I don't have no information on what, how would I would know that until the league makes a decision uh, on allowing the states to talk about it and the clubs to talk about it. You know, I mean, there's so many hoops to go through to get that uh, organized. I, I don't have any information to help you on that. Um, I think we're just waiting to hear what the word is. Sorry. What? Uh, what tangible effect do you think it'll have for your team in particular? This is probably the biggest home field advantage in the league. Well, we're going to do everything we can to make it as hyped as possible. Um, in particular, for the fans that aren't here, I'm thinking that uh, where you're watching the games at home, that, that this should be a, a demonstration of the 12 spirit at, at, on the home front. And uh, I think you should get it jacked up as much as you can. I know that sounds crazy, but maybe we maybe we can tell you know just from your energy and your juice from as you pass it along and how excited the 12s are, and you got to crank it up at home. I mean, I would think we should be a contest for best uh, best Seahawks you know, look. You know who, who's who's got the best blitz you know uh, uh, outfit going on in your in your living room, um, uh, best touchdown celebrations. I mean, all that we should do it all and uh, make it as fun as we can and 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 uh, pump it up. Be great in your neighborhoods if you could hear you know you could hear people. Cheering outside, out the windows and stuff, uh, and, and all that when we when we do our touchdowns and score our points and all that. And sorry, one on the field, uh, Philip Dorsett. He looks like he's running away from some of your corners and safeties. What element is he bringing that's a little new? He's the fastest guy we've ever had here, Greg. You know, I mean, he's, he runs. I mean, in the, the time realms we we don't even think really exist. You know, four twos and stuff, um, and and. In our system with Russ and, and the way Russ likes to bomb the football, um, he, he's a big factor for us. And matter of fact, you know, we're just installing stuff in the next couple of days that really accentuate um, some of those kinds of plays. And, and I'm really anxious to see him fit in. Tyler's been phenomenal at that stuff over the past in the in the past, and and uh, to have the complement really with all of that speed on the field at the same time, DK and and uh, and, and Tyler and, and Philip, um, it's pretty dynamic, you know. So. But he's done really well, yeah, and that's what you've seen. He's got behind us a couple times. Bob. 
Yeah, hey Pete, we saw you uh, pick up a quarterback off waivers the other day. Just curious where he fits in and what you thought of Anthony Gordon so far. Um, Anthony hasn't had a lot of work opportunities. He's picked everything up really well and, and smart as can be. Um, but we're just looking for competition. You know, we, that it's a little bit different. I'm feeling a little bit different. You know, the sense of urgency of not having the four games when you have to get your third quarterback ready to play in those preseason games. It's a little different for us. So we're able to focus on the one and two uh, more so. Um, so that's it's a little bit of a change. But we just want to, uh, you know, we've, we've thought a lot with Danny. We want to see what he looks like here on our field and see, see where he fits in. And one more, uh, you said the other day you hope to get Quentin Dunbar on the field today, but is that sort of the plan and, and where, I guess, he, is he in his, his progression and all that? Uh, I'll, I won't really know much until today, really, Bob, until we get him out there, you know. And, and uh, But you know, we've, it's gone the way the trainers had planned it, and so we'll, we'll see where he is. And he, this will be the first time he'll move full speed since he's arrived. Um, they've been building towards that um, after and around practice, so we'll see what, how it goes. I, I'll let, let you know more. When I get it. All right. Thank you. Ben Arthur. It's okay. <laughs> hey, Pete. Um, how How is uh, Jordan Brooks doing? I know you talked about him the other day, but how's his going? Uh, he's practicing today. He practiced some uh, day before yesterday. Got some reps and surprises that he that he was able to bounce back. Um, he's getting a pretty good number of plays today. Not quite a full load, but he'll be out there. So uh, we just want to work him back in, make sure he's okay. Um, you know, might have, it might have been a little more of a cramp than, than it was a, a tug, you know, and, and a pull. And so uh, we're hopefully keeping fingers crossed that he can do some good things today and is able to come back tomorrow and the next day. We'd like to really get him out there on, on uh, Saturday if we can. And then the uh, second question I had, uh, I know you, you've talked about, you know, Marquise Blair and transitioning him to the nickelback role, but um, from like a mentality standpoint, how have you seen him kind of hit another, maybe hit another gear in year two and, I think I was reading somewhere that he's put on 10 to 15 pounds of muscle. Um, I was wondering if you could talk about yeah, that. He yeah, really, he really has pumped up. He had a great offseason. And, and that's such a good sign for a guy that's really tuned in and into it, wanting to make a statement, wasn't satisfied with what happened in his first year, all of that. Um, he really, he's one of our most aggressive players and, and toughest guys, and, you know, and, and uh, to get another guy on the field like that just adds to the, to the dynamics of our defense. And, and so... So far, he's done really well, and we've, we haven't seen anything we don't like about him. Um, and uh, there's still more in the installation to come that, that will give him a chance to do more. And so um, I'm just, I'm actually, I can't wait for every day as he keeps coming out. He, he lear he's learning his stuff really well. He's not having any trouble at all. Uh, if anything would be suffering, it's really, really, it might be more playing safety uh, because he's focused so much on the nickel spot. But he still is in, in the running for all of that too. So, uh, but we did emphasize the nickel stuff uh, first and foremost. Uh, Nick Sorensen is really working directly with the nickels and, and helping those guys develop. And uh, he's an exciting football player. And remember all the plays he made last year. Whenever he had a chance, he did some great, stu great stuff. And he in a real learning mode too. So uh, this is this going to be fun to see him go. Thank you. Brady. Hey, Pete, what's the balancing act like for cornerbacks in your system where you're telling them every day, you know, stay on top, but you also want them to take the ball away when the opportunity is there? What is that balancing act like for those guys? That's a good ball question, Brady. You guys don't ask questions like that. The, um, you know, in the defense, if, if, if teams can score fast and, and on long plays, you're not worth a darn. And so the responsibility comes to the guys on the back end, and it begins with the corners. They got to stay on top, and they got to, you know, they got to take care of their business and, and give us a chance to make it, uh, an opponent have to work their way down the field. So you can't play corner in our system because you can jump on, jump around and make a play, and then the next play you get beat. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. So, so our guys have to start and develop a real mentality for, for owning uh, the, the, the deep ball, go balls, post routes, use their safety accordingly and all that. Um, and then they work their way back. And, and when you play really good technique uh, consistently, then you're available for the opportunities is kind of how it works. Meaning that if the quarterback's a hair late, the receiver tips off his route, changes the depth, and runs it a little early so you get a lead in, in on the break. And if you're playing really good, consistent uh, uh, um, principal defense, then you, you're available for the play that may come. Uh, being physical always is the overriding thing that, you know, the guy catches the ball, you make the hit, you can knock the ball out, whether you're breaking up a pass or whether you're forcing a fumble. And so that's, that's part of it as well. Um, uh, being in the right position in your zone so that when the quarterback errors and throws the ball over the top or thinks he's got you and he throws the ball and you're in total command of it, that's how they make their play. So I've not been one ever with, you know, coaching DBs for a million years, it seems, that, 
to make make guys think they have to make every play and stop every route. If you do that, then you get beat deep. And if you get beat deep, you're no good. So, um, you know, our, our guys playing outside, they're playing the, the, the fade ball for, for uh, Jody Allen and, and for the 12s and for everybody in the building, you know. They're the only guys that can stop those things, and they've got to have the right mindset to get that done. I'm really anxious to see Quentin in the next, you know, in the next week or so to see how he handles stuff. Um, technically, he's been coached up by guys who have been in our system, so that's a really big bonus. He, he knows all of our terminology technique-wise, uh, and, and so as he comes in here, he's just hearing it again, and so that's a really positive for us as we try to transition him. But we got to see what he's like. He's been a real instinctive football player and a playmaker, and so um, I'm hoping that shows up. We'll, we'll see how that works. I guess along somewhat similar lines. With a just guy another like great Shaquille, question you're thinking of? Yeah, okay. even better, maybe. Uh, a guy like Shaquille Griffin who's going into the final year of his contract, is there ever any danger of a guy trying to you know, make money and overextend himself on, on certain plays when he's in the contract year like he is? Heck yeah. Yeah, that, that, that factor of over trying, the factor of trying too hard or trying to make things happen you know, when they're really not there, is one of the biggest faults in, in performance. I mean, it's, it's not matching the opportunity with what it's called for. You, you try to do things because for the wrong reasons. And uh, whenever you do that, you know, you, you really make yourself vulnerable to, to giving up plays and, and making mistakes and errors and all that. So, um, and it, it doesn't matter what the factor is. You're talking about maybe it's contract year, maybe it's the last play, or maybe it was what happened in the game last week or whatever. And guys try to come back and do stuff. And whenever they get outside of how they're, they've been prepared and uh, the expectations of the position, and then they'll, sometimes they may make stuff up and try te technically different things, you're making yourself vulnerable. So it's really it's such a good question because this is about trusting the preparation, trusting what you know about yourself, trusting the coaching that's, that's come your way, trusting that you have a role to play for the guys on the field, the rest of the guys on the field and the team and all of that. All of that comes into play so guys don't over try and they don't make stuff up and they, they, they don't you know, play outside of themselves. It's so when we try to be something that we're not is when we really falter and, and fail. So um, it's a really good question because that's a huge part of performance. Wow. Two for two, Brady. Art? Dang. Why don't we just leave the uh, the Hollywood circle around Brady, Brady, see if he's got another one. I'm, I'm going to retire on that one. No, no, I mean, that's, that's probably a safe bet. You wouldn't want to try to make a big play, you know, and screw up. A lot of pressure, Art. That's good by Art Teal. Yes. <clears throat> I, get it to me in the low post. I'm great up to six inches. Um, the sweeping keep, hook. I keep to, uh, sweeping uh, hook in, in, the old, in the old form of Connie Durking. <laughs> uh, George Mikan. That's way um, back. None of these guys know who Connie Durkin is, let alone George Michael. Delmo Beatty. There you go. Good. Yeah. <laughs> um, in the absence of preseason games, uh, what keeps you awake at night about building an offensive line that has at least three new starters and perhaps a fourth? Um, well, the, the stuff that keeps me awake at night, I don't want to tell you about. There's too many of them. Um, but... Uh, Really, these, this, I know you're talking like the new starters and all that, but we're seeing guys that have started some football games and played, played a lot of ball too. So um, it's just really it's just a matter of time. It's a race against the clock, really, just to get them enough reps and get them in, you know, in situations that can call for them to express whether they know their stuff or whether they don't, whether they can respond really well under the, the tempo of the game and make the right decisions so they, they use the right scheme and tactic and, and, and and uh, you know, in identification, all that—that's it's just time. It's really what we're concerned about. So, those guys—we're trying to keep those guys as together as we can and try to predict how it's going to turn out. But there's such good competition that they're 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 making it hard on us. So, if there's anything, it would be that there's there's competition at the spots that make us want to see other guys that keep us from getting the extra turns together in the, in the same unit. So we're not calling it early, um, but um, but there'll be uh, we got three and a half weeks right now is what we're looking at. You know, and so. Um, we're just trying to log as many minutes as we can. So that's, that's really the part that we're concerned about. Can we get enough reps so that they can be ready for game time and they can really respond in a game speed like they have to? Nico. Uh, hey there, Coach. Uh, Nico, are you have a stoplight? Uh, no, no, oh, I'm okay. completely parked. I didn't Good, make okay. it home. I knew we wouldn't want you something. driving and zooming at the same time. Yeah. No, no, no. no I, I pulled over. Any there you go. Okay. 
You might want to roll your windows up. You can't hear you, Nico. <laughs> I'm sorry. There we go. I might. Hello? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, go. Okay, uh, just I wanted to know, with everything that you mentioned, everything that you got to get ready for, how much time is it going into finding those diamond and the roughs, those uh, maybe new players that that you typically would see during preseason games, and it's just easier to see them in those type of situations? It's just a built-in issue, you know, in this camp, in this format. It's a built-in issue for us that how, how can we – determine and decipher the guys that you know that would could do it on limited amount of attempts and not game reps as well um, so you know there's all I can tell you is we're, we're talking about it every day and doing our evaluations and trying to put guys in situations and it's already seemed to happen some um, for instance like we don't have any hesitation on Carlos Hyde right now I mean he already has shown us his movement and his instincts and his awareness and all of that so we know he the player that we've seen there's no question there the tough part is the guys who haven't played in the league as I think that's who you're talking about the young guys it's just more difficult for them and uh so they, they've got to make, you know, for their, in their own effort, they've got to make a good splash and when they get their chances, they, and they really have to be on their stuff so that when they get the opportunity, they can make the play that's available and, and not miss their chances. So it's uh, like, kind of like pinch hitting a little bit. You know, you got to get in there and get your cuts and hopefully, you, you know, you get a base hit. And they, they got to make some plays as they get their shots, which puts the pressure on them, which takes us back to the question of over trying, you know, and trying to make something happen that isn't there. Um, so this is a difficult situation, and hopefully, uh, you know, we're going to use a lot of our instincts and, and go from our, our, our gut feeling on guys. Uh, John and I have already talked about how we got to do that, and we're going to have to determine a lot of stuff out of maybe a little bit of information. And so, um, you know, hopefully everybody will contribute in a good way. We'll make good choices on that. And I hope the guys get their chances, you know. I don't want everybody to get their shots to show what they can do. And going back to that offensive line uh, real quick, uh, I wanted to know what the that a little bit better. Okay, Michelle, interpret that. <laughs> um, ask it again, Nico, cut out. I'm sorry. Uh, I wanted to know, uh, with all those new faces in the offensive line and all the changes there, how much more uh, of an importance does that make for a guy like Dwayne Brown and what he does, knowing your system and everything yeah, no it, no, it certainly does. We lean on we lean on the leadership more so than ever. You know, they they, they got to take guys under the wings. They got to have lunch with them. They got to talk it through, and they got to look after them more so. Um, even to the point where where Dwayne gets fewer reps, so other guys can get turns because we know he knows what he's doing. Um, uh, same with Michael Potty. You know, he, he's helping us out. Um, B.J. Finney's had more experience than some of the other guys. Um, Brandon Shell is a guy where you know we we think what we've seen on film has shown up already. We think we got a pretty good evaluation on him already. That helps us, but it it is it is a calling. This whole thing is a calling for everybody to work together. It's for being a great teammate, and that means you're helping others do well. And so, um, more so than ever, uh, in, a, in an accelerated pace, you know, with less opportunities, all of that is really what we're dealing with. It's relative across the board. All the teams are the same. I don't think you're going to notice a difference, but there's it's likely that. Some guys are going to be missed. You know, those players are going to be missed through the process, and, and uh, the older guys can really help us. Curtis. Hey, Pete, just kind of curious how Colby Parkinson's coming along, how close is he, and then also Stephon Sullivan there at the tight end spot. Okay. How they uh, yeah, uh, Colby's doing, he's doing everything. He's ahead of schedule. They, they're excited that he's going to, you know, make a return here before the camp's over. Um, but that's really all I got for you. You know, he's, he's doing – everything's working out quite well, according to – and he's, he's really tolerating all of the workload, so that's really good. Uh, Steph has really done some good stuff uh, for us. We've been really excited about his work. Um, he shows this, the, the catching skills uh, that, uh, that the wide receiver background brings, you know, and, and uh, so it is a project for us to teach him, you know, how to be on the line of scrimmage and what he can do there. He's played there some, but not a lot, so that, that's – uh, you know, Pat McPherson's job to try to figure out how to catch him up. Um, but he's a really nice athlete, and I, I really like the pick um, that we made because he, he looks like he fits. Joe. Is it more important without preseason games to go more best on best, both in practices and in your scrimmages you have? Another good. You guys, you guys are you're just not just sitting home watching uh, Bob Barker or something. Uh, yeah, that's a good observation. It is. And... Uh, where they won't get the game time, you know, and 
second game, third game of the preseason, we got to get it out here. So our guys are going against each other more than, than normal. And we like our ones against ones anyway, but they are getting more reps just so that they're playing at the most competitive uh, you know, opposition we can give them. Last question, Chris Francis. Hey, Coach. Um, I, I want to go back to Dwayne a little bit. We're going to hear from him here. Um, you've always had great leaders. What, how special is his leadership, in ter especially in terms of the offensive line? Uh, he, he is, he's a unique leader. Um, he, well, he's just a unique person. He's really got his act together. He's really serious about his craft. Um, he's got, he's got a, a really good brain, just figuring things out in the world and got a good perspective and all. I mean, you ask him anything, you know, and, and he's, he just can handle himself really well. Uh, so he's got, he's got good skills in, you know, in, in how to deal with people, communicating. Um, has good sense and awareness. I go to him all the time, asking him questions about how things are ha you know, going, how, what's the tempo like, does it feel good, are we, are we doing, doing the right stuff to get the best out of us? I mean, I, I lean on him all the time, and uh, it's because I just think he has such a good perspective and all, so uh, he's very valuable to us. Okay, thank you, Dwayne. Okay. It's coming See right you. up.